All right, so here we're looking at Mitch Mitchell, who is best known for his time with Jimi Hendrix, with the Jimi Hendrix experience. So we're looking at his period in the late 60s, um, and you, you've got the sheet music. So, um, you know, it, it's going from, we're looking at Little Wing, which was 1967, uh, through to Crosstown Traffic in 1968. So it's quite a short, short time frame. Um, but he produced some awesome stuff. So like a lot of drummers from that period, Mitch had a jazz background and that is a big part of his sound. It's very flowing, very loose triplety feel. Um, it's like evident in everything he's playing. So although this was the start of rock, or sort of psychedelic rock, um, his jazz influence is massive here. And, and his use of rudiments, which we're going to look at in, in some of the stuff we do here. So, let's just get down to this. First thing I want to, the first song I want to look at is Little Wing. Partly because I love it. It's a cool song. But, partly because it's got these really nice flowing trips, triplety feels, these sextuplets. So, the, the main feel for this is going like one triplet and triplet, two triplet and triplet, three triplet and triplet, four triplet and triplet. That's the underlying feel, even when he's not playing it all. Um, they're still there in the music. Now, if we look at this opening feel, this is where the drums come in. We can see it starts off with two sextuplets. So that's beat one or two. One triplet and triplet, two triplet and triplet. It accents on those on the ands, on the one and two and, so on the eighth note, so like one triplet and triplet, two triplet and triplet. And he accents those by playing it on the high tom and the other notes are on the snare. Now he plays this as a single straight roll, so whenever you're doing a triplet bass thing, that switches your accent hand, because you're gonna go right first on the, on, the, on the high tom, right, left, right, and then the next one will be left on the high tom, right, left. So it's switching uh, the hand that plays the high tom. Right, left, right, left, right, left. So let me just play that to you so you get a feel for it. Three, four. And that alone is something worth working on because you can start to move those around the kit to create feels just from that type of thing. So, you know, that's a really nice exercise just to get moving your accents around the kit. So, that's the first half. But you might be thinking, wait a minute, what about that note at the beginning? Well, yeah, he does, he leads in with a left hand. So that's on the very last sextuplet note of the previous bar. So we're gonna kind of add that on just as a, as a nice pickup note afterwards, okay? So, just looking at the main bar here. So we've got that for two beats, for two sextuplets, so, one triplet and triplet, three triplet and triplet. Not one and three, it was one and two. One triplet and triplet, two triplet and triplet. And then beat three and four goes snare, floor tom, floor tom, floor tom, floor tom. I've written some sticking on here, but the, to be honest, the last few notes, it's just a suggestion. Do whatever you want there, it doesn't really make a difference. So I've written right, 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 left, right. You can do whatever you want, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. So the count of that goes, three triplet and triplet, four triplet and triplet, three triplet and triplet, four triplet and triplet, three triplet and triplet, four triplet and, play it as, three, four. And up to speed. So we've got the first part that I played slowly, the second part that I played slowly. Let me play that whole bar together slowly. Three and four and. That's the fill, okay? Now if we put the pickup note, we're just gonna add the left hand before it, so like, one, two, three, four.
Okay, and now we're going to look at the second uh, the second line down, which is still from Little Wing, and it's got a time there, so one minute, four seconds, Phil. It's just an awesome feel. See, he's putting loads of these rolling sex tuplet bass feels in that song. They sound wicked. He does it in loads of songs. It's a real big part of Mitch Mitchell's style. I want to look at this one specifically. So we can see it's quite similar to the, the first bar. It starts with the little pickup note on the left hand. It finishes exactly the same. But in the middle, we've got two figures of this thing. Now, I will tell you, it's still a sex tuplet, and I've put a rest on the second note. I don't know, maybe it is there and it might be quiet and actually you might find it easier to play it because if you do, it's still following that right, left, right, left, right, left thing except it only plays the first note on the high tone. So if we fill in that rest, we get this. By the way, we're going to come to those doubles but right now I'm going to keep it single so we get this. We got, we're going to play it. I'll play the accents there I'll explain them. Okay, so you can see I'm accenting the right hand on the high tom, then the next right on the snare, and then I'm accenting the last left on the snare. So we get this. Okay, sometimes there I did play uh, a note in where that 16th note rest is, sometimes I didn't. If you're going to play a note there, it's going to be a very quiet left hand on the snare. Play it or don't play it, it's, it's like it's quiet. That's, maybe it's there, maybe it's not, I don't know. I couldn't hear it, but probably it would be more natural if it was there. As long as it's quiet, it's all good. Now, the thing that we need to look at now is we can see that dash through that left and that right hand here on the one chip lit and trip, so it's on the and trip if you can see it, they're played as doubles. So that note, it's one note with a line through the stem, that's actually two notes. And you can see I've written under it, right? It says left, left, right, right. So we're just gonna double those notes. So you know we're going right, left, right, left, right, left. So now we're gonna go right, left, right, left, left, right, right, left. I'll play that slowly. So that's the figure. You you might need to practice that for a long, long time before you're happy with it. If you do, that's fine. Don't worry about it. It's a tricky figure. Um, I'm going to repeat it now because it, he actually plays it twice in a row here. So I'm, I'm going to just loop it around so you get a feel for how it loops. So that's it looping, right? And now I'm going to speed it up a little bit so you can start to hear it a bit like it is in the song. I won't go full speed yet, but I'll speed it up a bit. Okay, that's it. But honestly, take as long as you need to bring it up to speed. Play it slow like I did before. Go back, rewatch that, understand the timing of it. And gradually, as you stop thinking about it, the speed will come and of course along with the the speed and the understanding of the rhythm you, you'll need that technique to be able to play those doubles quickly and smoothly anyway after he does that twice boom ga shaka ga 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 boom ba shaka ga 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 it finishes with the same figure it does at the end of the previous line we did ga gung gung ga gung so let's put both things together i'm going to ignore the pickup note for now uh, so we're gonna go like three and four and. Alright guys, so that was the fill. I'm gonna play it at full speed for you now, but before I you know before I finish this and we move on, I just want to say this is the hardest thing on this sheet. It is tricky, so go at your speed, whatever your speed is, gradually bring it up. 
Um, you might not be ready for this yet, and that's fine, but just by learning it and understanding it, it'll be something you can work towards. And once you do, you can apply it to lots of different fields and use it in lots of different ways, as well as playing this song. And a big thing that's gonna limit some of us to be able to play this at full speed is actually the double strokes there. So it's a good excuse to really get down and work on the technique of those doubles as well. Um, I think things like this, we always need a reason to, to work on those boring things. So this might be a reason for you to really get down and work on those. All right. Um, so I'm just gonna play it at um, kind of full speed now. And then you can, you can just work on it at your own speed and gradually get it up there if you need to. All right, next up, Purple Haze, classic Jimmy tune again. Um, classic Jimi Hendrix tune. Um, so, this is a lot simpler than the last thing, the little wing, for, the fills for little wing. This is a lot simpler. Um, it's just quarter notes on the snare at the beginning. This is like when the drums kick in at the beginning. And then we're gonna do bass drums on the three hand and the four hand. And I'm gonna chuck some in on beat one. That's what you got written on the sheet music as well. Bass drum, beat one, just to beef it. So it's gonna be like, one, two, three, four, on the snare. And then the bass coming in between, it's like, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, boom, 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 two, three, gum, 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 two, three. So it's like, down, 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 that kind of speed. All right guys, so that's it. So just we're just looking at the simple groove at the beginning there. And what you heard me do it, so it says here times eight. So we're gonna do that beginning bit for eight bars, and then it kicks into just a nice sort of straight funky groove. And then what you've got in that song is then a bunch of like Mitch Mitchell feels. So you know, I've talked before about getting inside a, a style of a, a, a player's style and understanding the types of feels they do, it makes it much easier then to just kind of improvise. So if I was jamming a song, I would not bother to learn, you know, note for note what he played on that recording. And that's not because I'm lazy, it's because you don't need to do that. It's good, you're, you're gonna give a much better performance if you're able to play freely. Mitch Mitchell wouldn't have played that again. If you got another take from that recording session, the other one would be different. You know, because he's just flowing, he's feeling it, he's just doing, doing his thing. Um, and if you go and check out live records again, a lot of the fills are going to be different. There's some that you might get into a pattern of doing the same, but a lot of it's going to be little variations. So I much prefer to study a player's style and then just play and just feel it and play it like, like they would have. And it, there might be a bit of room for me to put my own spin on things. It depends on the, on the situation. Uh, but otherwise, I might play it just the way I think they would have played it, okay? But just as a little caveat, I know sometimes there's certain things you do have to nail note for note, I get that. But this sort of thing, I think it's more about getting the essence of it. So, Purple Haze, get the groove, and just go and have fun, just jam along. All right, so Manic Depression, awesome song. So, you can see here right at the beginning, um, time signature, three, four. So that's what makes this a bit different. It's got a really cool rolling rhythm. So we're gonna learn it as it's written here. And again, um, this is the sort of thing that I just think it's cool to learn these types of beats and you can apply them in different ways. I know I heard um, Chad Smith from the Red Hot Chili Peppers referencing this once uh, for um, Breaking the Girl. I don't even know that tune off Blood Sugar Sex Magic album. But I remember hearing it, hearing him say that and I knew both tunes, I was like, oh yeah, I can hear how that influenced your approach to this song. Different song, different groove, but you can kind of hear it. So that's why we learn all these other grooves that have come before us, because that helps give us ideas that we can then channel into our own drum parts that we create. 
But here we're going to learn it as it is. So it's in 3 4, so that means three chord notes in a bar. One, two, three. Now it's got a swung feel, so it's triplet bass, so we're going to feel it as one triplet, two triplet, three triplet. That's the underlying feel to this, uh, to this song. We're going to put the bass drum on all the quarter notes. That's it, okay? The ride cymbal is going to be kind of jazzy. And what, what I've written here, because I'm this is what I'm hearing is a normal ride on beat one, and then ride bells for the rest of the bar. So you can play it like that. I, I would learn it all on just one surface at first. So all on the regular part of the ride or all on the bell. Once you've got the groove down, you can start to move it around if you need to. Or you might listen to the record and go, actually, I think it's all on the bell. Or you might listen to the record and go, hey, I can kind of hear it's like that, but I think it sounds better all on the bell. That's fine. You know, I wouldn't stress too much about that movement. It's, I don't think it's an integral part of the song. But the ride part's basically going one, two, three, three. One, two, triplet, three. One, two, triplet, three. So if I play the ride and the bass together, we get this. Okay. Work on that until you're happy. And then if we look at the left hand, it's going on the snare, one trip let, two trip let, and then on the third beat it goes three trip let, and that's on the floor tom. So like one trip let, two trip let, three trip let, one trip let, two trip let, three trip let. So I'm gonna play the left hand and the bass together so we can hear how those are working. One, two, three. Okay, so we played the bass and the ride. We played the bass and the left hand. So now I'm gonna put the hands together. So I'm gonna go ride, snare, ride, ride and snare, and then ride tom tom. So it's the, the two hands together. So one, two, three. Okay, so we've done the bass and the right hand, we've done the bass and the left hand, and we've done both hands together. So now we're ready to try the whole lot together. The, the more time you spend on, on those pairs, so three pairs that we did there, the more time you spend on each of those, the easier this end stage is. So everyone needs to work at their own speed, but stay slow and take as long as you need on each of those. And when you're ready, we can try the whole pattern. So I'm gonna play it for you now, I'll play it kind of slow, and then afterwards we'll, we'll listen to it at full speed. So here it is kind of slow. One, two, three. Okay, so that's the whole pattern. So let me play it to you a bit quicker now. Um, I reckon that's about full speed. So it says one, five, three here. Um, a lot of these tracks, the speed moves a bit. This was pre-using a metronome. So, you know, you get a speed at the beginning and songs will move just cause they're human beings rocking out and playing and that's all. That's all fine, it's all part of it. Um, but it's roughly about one, five, three. So let's try that. All 
Alright, and so the final thing I wanted to look at uh, here with the Mitch Mitchell study is um, crosstown traffic, right? Um, so this is from the Electric Lady Land album 1968. As you can see on the sheet music, and what I really want to look at is just the opening film. So it's that ba down 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 ba ba bam, right? Because it's it's a clever little kind of metric modulation or implied metric modulation thing. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just go and search for that on Total Drama because there's a lesson on implied metric modulation. But just in short, what he's doing is he's playing two notes, then missing one, two, then then missing one. So it creates a three note pattern whereby you play two, miss one. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's quite simple. But played over 16th notes, it falls in a really interesting way over the beat. So you get one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four and. So I did the whole two bars there. I counted it how it is. The, the reason that becomes this implied metric modulation is because if you repeat that pattern and keep it going, they're like play two, miss one, play two, miss one. It ends up sounding like a shuffle at a different tempo. So if I'm really going, if my tempo is actually going one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a, but I go. Now that's fine with the hi hat because that gives you the pulse. But if I take the hi hat away now, I go. After a while, your brain hears a shuffle. One, two, three, four. So it implies that you've gone into this faster tempo playing a shuffle, but you haven't really. You're still playing the sixteenth note pattern: one e and a two e and a. Right? We're not going too deep on metric modulation here, but that's why this is cool. If you want to understand that more, go and search for it on the on Total Drama because there's a lesson that like goes just onto that subject. But for now, we're just going to play snare and floor tom. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four and finishes with flat, right? So I'll do it after all. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a So that's da down, da down, da down, da down, da down, da down. It's like following Jimmy's guitar. Um, it does that feel throughout the song as well. It keeps returning to that. And other than that, it's just boom, cut, do 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 down, down. Just playing a funk beat. So let me do it kind of full speed with that feel, and then I'll just go into a groove. <laughs> <laughs> 